Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. We're going to do a series today, or two series, one on following Christ, and we're going to do one on spiritual depression. And uh, I've just got an hour to spare, uh, and uh, I'm just going to do these videos, so I hope it's going to be a help to you. Now, the following Christ one is a course of about 20 videos, two, three minutes each, where it will take you through the basics of the Christian life. So if you are a seeker, or if you are a uh, believer uh, who's just young in the faith, this course is for you. Uh, but if you're an older believer and you want to get back to the basics, this is also helpful. Uh, there's no copyright on this course. If you want to make it into DVDs, sell the course. If you want to uh, write a booklet with the with the videos and do it with your Bible study group. I will put notes under each video so that you can use it uh, for further Bible study with your uh, Bible study church group. So you're welcome to use it for your church, home church group. Um, um, feel free to, like I said, make DVDs and just spread these uh, little studies um, for the glory of God. So let's come before the Lord. I'll start with prayer before and and after each video. <coughs> Sorry. Almighty God, I just thank you for this day and for your goodness and love. Father, as we just look at your word, I just pray I'd be able to pull out a few thoughts to help people in their walk with you. I ask, Father, that all these videos that I do would be for your glory. I pray that there would be a blessing to people. I pray for the help of the Holy Spirit, and I ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you be in every one of these videos, that you would use them for your glory. And Father, I just pray that you would be with me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to look at um, part one, and we're looking at new life, and we're looking at Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Romans chapter 5 uh, verse 1 if I don't get a chance to do the spiritual depression today I'll do the spiritual depression another day okay Romans 5 chapter 5 verse 1 to 11 I'm using the NIV uh, it's good to get a good literal translation I, I, I use um, the New King James a lot but I'm using this because it's for new believers who may be haven't got a church background and they'll find the NIV easy to read but I would recommend you if you're a new believer when you start growing to get more of a literal Bible translation okay because some of these modern translations uh, are a bit weak all right in the translation <coughs> Romans chapter 5 verse 1 to 11 Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance and character and character hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man some might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by this blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if when we were God's enemies... We were reconciled to God through the death of his son. How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so by so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Then, if we... we we'll come... I've got another passage that we can look at later on, which is Romans chapter 6, verse 5 to 14, but... For your Bible study group, if you could all read that together, maybe a few of you just read a few verses each. Um, but just, you know, just read it 
privately if you want to if you're not in the Bible study group and just be quiet and just meditate on it before I speak and all I'm going to do is just pull out a few thoughts and leave you with a few questions really the question is when you become a, be a believer what has happened okay sorry about this I've got he says therefore since we have been justified through faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand so what what does that mean well what it means is to be a Christian is to be justified through faith justified means declared right okay you're declared right before God and faith is the receiving of that justification I'll, I'll unpack it for you so don't worry imagine imagine um, sorry I've got, I've got some crisp in my mouth sorry about that don't eat crisp before you do a video um, imagine that you have um have been taken to court okay um for a criminal act that you've done let's say let's say a burglary okay and you go to court and you're sentenced um the court says that you are guilty it's been proven that you're guilty and you're going to go uh, to prison now while you're in a cell at the police station waiting to be transferred to the jail a lawyer comes and gives you a piece of paper and on the piece of paper it says not guilty uh, everything's paid in full all you've got to do is take the paper okay now what has happened is you've had um, a very powerful political figure an MP who um, is in the cabinet of, of, of the government and has stood in your stead and said you know whatever that person's fined uh, I'll pay it you know whatever whatever the the effect of that crime is I'll pay it I'll, I'll sort it out uh, and whatever punishment he has I'll take the punishment now I know that's far-fetched I mean that's very very far-fetched but that's what's happened with you and and Christ is what's happened is you've been found guilty I've found guilty and we're going to hell not prison okay and God sends us a piece of paper the Word of God with a promise that we're, we're, we're not guilty if we take that paper if we believe the Word of God and take that paper then we're free we don't go to hell because Christ has paid it all he took your punishment upon the cross he took your judgment on the cross and that is justification by faith you're justified declared right before God on account of what Christ has done and faith receives that justification that declaration that you're right before God in Christ okay so that I hope that's a help um, but that's what it means And you might say, well, Jay, your parallel between the MP and Jesus doesn't work. It's only an illustration, but the thing is about the Christian understanding uh, of what Christ has done. You see, God is the ultimate lawgiver, right? So he can step in on your behalf, and he can absolve you. 
if he takes the punishment because he is the highest legal authority in the universe okay and uh, I'll just pull out one or two two more and it says and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God the Christian faith when you get redeemed when you ha enter into this salvation so you've got to believe that Christ died for you and trust in you uh, that, that he died for you he shed his blood for you on the cross you've got to believe that and understand that and believe that and belief is just resting your your whole weight on that it's resting your whole life on what Christ says and, and what he's done for you and then it says and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God not only so but we also rejoice in our suffering so a true believer can will begin to joy in God you'll you'll have a relationship with God and joy will come now many of you will find will not will find you're not getting much joy because you're full of doubts and fears and worries and you, you you don't understand the faith but keep going keep reading the Word of God keep 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 with the Lord's people in the local church keep going and the joy will grow and grow in you okay and then it says and and in our, not only so but we also rejoice this is verse 3 Romans 5 verse 3 not only so but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance every child of God is going to go through suffering you're going to hear a lot as a new believer this health and wealth gospel on the TV on the on the God channels and all the rest of it and it's all give us money and you're going to be happy that's not the Bible that's that's not the Bible that's the health and wealth gospel and it's and it's from the pit of hell okay and you get a lot of these preachers in big churches and they'll they'll preach come to Jesus and then give us your money and it's offer it's, and they have a service every week and every week they talk about the offering about what you've got to give all right and that is wrong yeah it's good you do give as a believer you give each week you tithe but nobody tells you to do that it's up to you between the Lord but to tell everybody every week they've got to give and to give part of the service over where all they're doing is talking to you about giving money all the time it's wrong and then these preachers come to the church in sixty thousand pound cars uh, big big time preachers and things it's wrong because it's all about money and Christian faith is about Christ it's about following him and sometimes it's not it's going to be difficult sometimes you're going to go through difficult times as a young believer and as a mature believer sometimes you're going to go through tough times and this idea that oh hi the account of the Lord and give us your money everything's going to be fine is just nonsense was it fine for Jesus what happened to Jesus he was crucified was it fine for Paul he was battered to death nearly many times was it fine for Peter Tradition has it, he was crucified upside down. Was it fine for the Lord's brother James, who was martyred? Sometimes you're going to go through suffering as a young believer. So don't be discouraged if you go to work or, or you tell people that you're a Christian and they laugh at you. They'll, they will laugh at you. In some countries, if you tell them you're a believer, you will get killed. In a Muslim country, if you were a Muslim and then became a Christian, you would be called an apostate and you could be, you could be killed by the state. So don't worry about suffering. Sometimes you're going to suffer, but it don't matter because Christ is with you, he's inside you, and you're okay. Okay? And then he says, and hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. The Holy Spirit is now in you. When you became a believer, the Holy Spirit is in you. And the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace. And, and the best thing you can do as a, as a young believer is always wait on the Holy Spirit and be guided by the Holy Spirit each day say Lord fill me with your Holy Spirit lead me today in the power of your Holy Spirit teach me from your word in the Holy Spirit be a person of the Holy Spirit and it says you 
See, at the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. You've got to remember that you and I were ungodly. We were sinners. But we're saved by grace. Very rarely will anyone die for the righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And that's the thing, as a new believer, you've got to start meditating on. The love of God in your life. You've got the love of God in your life. Christ died for you because He loved you. He gave everything for you because He loved you. And all the things that are going on in your family and in your life at the present time and all the nonsense that's getting you down and the dark thoughts that keep coming in your mind you've got to get them out of your mind and get into your mind that Christ loved you at the cross that he loves you right now he's with you right now he will lead you through your life and everything's going to be okay it might be difficult it might be hard but it'll be okay because Christ loves you and he's with you one of the greatest problems of young believers and mature believers and all of us today is we don't understand what Christ has done for us. And if we understood what Christ done for us and what, and what Christ thinks of us, then we wouldn't worry as much. And do you realize that God demonstrated his own love to you that he gave his only begotten son? In other words, God couldn't have done any more for you than he has done. He gave everything. He poured out his heart, his mind, his soul for you. He sent everything that he had, his son, to die on a cross for you. And he loved you. So when your family's getting on your nerves or because some issue, or if there's something at the church that's getting you down, maybe a Christian's failed you, maybe the pastor's failed you, or maybe something in the world's getting you down and you feel what's it all about meditate on the love of God in Christ that he died for you that God gave everything for you and if you trust in him you'll be okay there's a love there for you let's go on to uh, Romans 6 5 14 and then we'll have to finish Romans uh, Romans 6 5 14 if we have been united with him like this in his death we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection for we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been freed from sin now if we died with Christ we believe that we will also live with him for we know that since Christ was raised from the dead he cannot die again death no longer has mastery over him the death he died he died to sin once and for all but the life he lives he lives to God in the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master, because you are not under law, but under grace. Now, I was talking to someone, a um, street preacher. And this person came up to me and told me that they were struggling with uh, sexual difficulties, sexual problems. And they'd struggled for a long, long time. And when you become a believer, a new believer, and there'll be a lot of believers who are struggling with sin. You're struggling with sin in your life and you can't beat the sin. And it's getting you down and it depresses you and you wonder, am I really a believer? Because I keep sinning all the time. What, what's going on? Why is that the case? What's going on there is you don't understand what's happened to you. You don't understand the resources that are there for you. And it's understanding 
what has happened to you and it's understanding the resources that you will begin to develop strength to overcome your sin okay so let's just unpack this just a little bit sorry about this let's just unpack this a little bit okay Romans 6 540 I know I've read it but it's some it's quite deep and you need to think about this Romans 6 514 if we have been united with him like in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. So, that's the key in understanding where you're at at the moment. At the moment, as a new believer, you're probably walking in sin. You're probably doing things you shouldn't be doing. And you know you're doing those things, but you can't seem to stop it. Or sometimes you just don't realise that you're doing those things, in a way. But, Something at the back of your mind saying that you need to go a different way. And then there are many believers out there that are walking in sin. Keep walking in sin. But he says his, if we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. And that's the key. If you get hold of that key, you get, you'll begin to break the sin in your life, whatever that sin is. Whatever that sin is. Now, someone might say, well, I'm struggling with sexual sin, okay? Or I'm struggling with this, or I'm struggling with that. The whole problem with sin is the sin, we love the sin. It becomes an idol to us. I can't help but preach. I'm, a, I'm an old-time preacher, so forgive me. It becomes an idol, Okay? And what we've got to do is we've got to make God the one that we love more than the sin. We've got to love God with all our hearts more than the sin. But what we do is we play with the sin and we love the sin more than God. And then we say to ourselves, and, 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 and some of it's true, where we say, oh well we're lonely or we're needy or whatever, and we justify our sin. We justify the things that we think or do wrong. And that is us really deep down though. Not loving God. More than we love ourselves. And our sin. That's what it comes down to. And the problem lies here. If we have been united with him. Like this in his death. We will certainly also be united with him. In his resurrection. And it's kind of like this. When you're a believer, you kind of walk your own way. Everybody is going in the way of sin. They're going in the way of Adam. Adam sinned and we sinned. And we walk in the way of sin. Right? But, and this is the truth you've got to get hold of. And it's not easy to get hold of. Whatever happened to Christ, when you believe in him, happens to you. Alright, so... <clears throat> Let's just work this out so that you get you get a hold of this because it's really important. I was going to do the 20 part series in a whole hour but it looks like we're going to have to just take this on board each week or whenever I can. Okay. Let me just uh, unpack this identification. Okay. Imagine... Um, You've got a, a a twin brother, say. Okay. And your twin brother goes to um, to a shopping mall, right? And then suddenly a lorry comes and knocks your twin brother over. Boom, right? Now. Because it's your twin brother, what has happened to your twin brother in a way you can feel more than anybody else what has happened, okay? It, 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 it's, it's happened to them, alright? They've been knocked over by a truck. Because you're a twin brother, it's affected you, alright? It's had an impact on you. It's almost like 
No, it's a bad illustration, that. Sorry about that. Let, let, let me just think a minute for an illustration. I'm trying to get uh, get you to see... Um, I, I used an illustration. We were at a Bible study the other day. Imagine you I've got a coat, okay? I've got a black coat. And... This is the righteousness of Christ. All that Christ has done is the black coat on me. Right? But I take my black coat off and I put it on you. Now it becomes your coat and you wear it. The black coat is the righteousness of Christ which is on me. Okay? And the moment you believe in me, in Christ, the coat that I have on is transferred and put upon you. So try and imagine that in your mind. That is that is the best illustration that I can think of about identification. The moment you believe in Christ, all that Christ is and has done becomes yours. Alright? So all his righteousness, his death, his resurrection is transferred to you. Okay? Have you got that? Now he died as well and he rose. And so not only is his life and death transferred to you in terms of you're covered with Christ's righteousness, you're covered with Christ's blood, you're covered with all the goodness of Christ. So when God the Father looks at you, he sees Christ. Okay? Excuse me, but when he died, he died for you. So your old life died. When he rose, you rose from the dead. So the moment you believe in him, that day when Christ died on the cross, you died on that cross. All your sin was punished. The moment you believed in Christ is the moment he rose from the dead, you rose from the dead. Okay? So what that means is, the moment you believe in Christ today, your old life was crucified at the cross and was risen again in a new life in Christ. So when you believe in Christ, you are a, a new creature in Christ. You, you're in a new dimension. You're in a new matrix, a new, a new time frame. You are now seated at the right hand of the Father in, in, with Christ. Okay, You're seated with Christ in the heavenlies right now. You've got the victory right now. And what you need to do is realize that your old life is gone. The old selfish ways, the old things, it's been dealt with, it's been destroyed. And what you've got to do is believe that and live in the victory of what Christ has done. And believe that your old crucified life of sin has been dealt with. So, when you come to a sin, it's rather like the people of God coming to the, to the Jordan. The river of Jordan and, and Moses has to hold up the staff. Which is a symbol of faith in God and his promises. And the water parts and they're able to walk through across the Jordan. And it's the same with sin. You come to a sin just like the river Jordan. It might be sexual sin. It might Whatever it is, it might be the sin of anger. It might be the sin of covetousness, whatever it is and you come to that sin you come to the river of Jordan and you can't beat it you can't nail it, you can't destroy it, it keeps coming and it's pulling you down and it's pulling you down and pulling you down and it's getting you down and year after year maybe some of you have gone many many years in defeat on a sin and you come to this sin, you come to the river Jordan right and at that point you've got to look up. Not hold the staff up, but you've got to look up to the cross. And you've got to remember what happened at the cross. That at the cross your old life was destroyed, it was judged. The sin that's pulling you down was dealt, was destroyed at the cross. It died. When Christ died, it died. It was nailed, it was gone. 
Okay? But when Christ rose, you rose in victory over that sin. So what you've got to do is look to the cross and believe that it happened. And at the moment you believe that it happened, that your sin was destroyed at the cross, and that you were resurrected in a new life with Christ, the moment you believe that, the power of the old sin will break. And you'll be able to cross the Jordan in victory. It's deep stuff, I know. For a new believer, it, it, it's deep, I know. But these are simple things that believers were trained in years and years ago. And we need to get back to these basic principles of biblical Christianity. So what I would ask you to do as leaders um, or in your own private devotions, read Romans 5, 1, 11 and ask yourself, where is the love of God in that passage? And, and, and try to find the love of God or aspects of the love of God in Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. And then in Romans chapter 6, verse 5 to 14, have a chat, have a prayer with God, or have a chat in your Bible study group, and be open and honest, and don't judge anybody, but share some of the struggles that you have with your fellow believers in your walk with the Lord, that you can't get victory over, and pray together that you will get victory over these things. Don't start judging people if they share. Let them share. Give them the comfort and love that they need. Okay? And back each other up and support each other. And help each other. Okay. Well, I didn't realise it was going to be 30 minutes. So, I think... Um, I think... It's going to be... Uh, a series maybe I'll have to do every morning or something or I'll, I'll anyhow it's a 20 20 part series course so just keep your eye out for when I do the next one might be some today it might be one a week or one a, one a day I don't know but keep if you like the series keep an eye out and I'll continue the series okay okay I'm gonna close in prayer so thanks for coming along and I hope that was a blessing to you. Um, if you've got any questions, uh, you can ask me questions. You can email me. If you're struggling with a, an issue in your life, sanctification issue, just contact me and uh, we can pray together. Um, and you know, I'm willing to support you. So don't feel, don't feel as if you're on your own. Don't feel people are going to be judging you and rejecting you if you're struggling with something. And if you're a new believer and, and nobody's encouraging you, just get in contact and I'll try and encourage you. But don't feel you're on your own running the race. Okay, let's let's come before the Lord. I've enjoyed it this morning and I hope it's been a blessing to you. And um, let's come before the Lord. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you today and Father we're conscious that sometimes we fail and maybe failed for many years in areas of our lives and Father we thank you for this wonderful salvation that we have in your son Jesus Christ and we thank you for the victory that we can have in him we give you the prayers and glory Father Son and Holy Spirit and these three are one we just acknowledge that you are a mighty God a mighty Saviour and a mighty Lord. We just thank you for your wonderful love and your wonderful grace and we just praise you Lord and we worship you and we honour you Lord and we thank you for this day. Father I just pray for all the new believers that might hear your word today or whenever they hear your word. Father that they would be truly blessed and truly encouraged through these this series. I pray for those who are older believers, maybe, Lord, they just need to be reminded of the basics. And I pray what I've shared with them would help them to get victory in their life. And so, God, I pray 
Father, I pray in his name, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the help of the Holy Spirit for all of us. I pray that the people who hear these words, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would anoint them and speak to them and refresh them and heal them and comfort them and be a blessing to them. So, Father, I ask this, Lord, in your name and for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I hope that was a blessing to you. I enjoyed it. It was only meant to be two minutes, and uh, it's ended up 35 minutes. So there's enough in there to keep you going. I'll leave um, some study material, um, some just basic stuff, and then I'll put something a bit more meaty for you uh, as well, okay, on some of the subjects that we've touched on on this, okay? And I hope that's a help. Like I said, feel free to use these videos there's no copyright if you want to make DVDs and give them away sell them I'm happy to do you happy happy for you to do that so long as you're promoting Christianity and the gospel of, of Jesus Christ um, you know the born-again Christianity um, and I hope it's been a blessing to you all right take care God bless mm -hmm.